Why do we celebrate the Day of Atonement? What is it? Well, the Day of Atonement is a holy feast unto the Lord. And we see in Leviticus 16, where we see Aaron, who is the high priest at the time, and he needs a goat. Um, he needs two goats. He needs one bull and he needs two goats. That one bull is to make a sin offering for himself and his household. And then the goats are to one is going to be the scapegoat and one is going to be sacrificed. And the blood from that sacrifice is going to go on the mercy seat and on the altar um, to make atonement for the sins of the people, to cleanse the people. So why do we celebrate it? Um, we don't need atonement f um, from an, with an animal, right? We don't because we have a high priest who is Christ Jesus and we have the atonement that he has made for us right the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus and the beauty of the day of atonement is that he, it was a foreshadowing of Christ himself and so I wanted to read um, two scriptures in Leviticus two scriptures in Hebrew and then in Isaiah in order to show how uh, Christ fulfilled this feast and why we celebrate it. So let's go into what the Day of Atonement is. In Leviticus 29, um, in Leviticus 16, verse 29, it says, And this shall be a permanent statute for you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall humble your souls or afflict your souls, some translation says, and not do any work, whether that the native or the alien who sojourns among you for it is on this day that atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you you shall be clean from all your sins before the lord it is to be a sabbath of solemn rest for you it that you may humble your souls it is a permanent statue now we cannot cleanse ourselves christ is our sanctifier christ is who cleans us amen amen and so um we see here in leviticus 16 29 through 31 that it is the high priest aaron who is doing this work for the people we have a high priest jesus has done that work for whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life amen and so we're now going to go to leviticus 17 11. it says for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement so again it is the blood that was necessary it is a blood covenant that we have in Christ Jesus amen it, and, and he keeps that for us he cleans, cleanses us he sanctifies us so in Hebrews it's going to really show well now we know what it is. Well, why? Well, in Hebrews verses 8, 1 through 2, it says, Now the main point is what has been said is this. We have such a high priest who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pinched, not man, the Lord. So this is a tabernacle in heaven, right? Thank you, Father God. So after 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. In order to have this festival happen, they needed a temple and they needed high priests. They needed the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood does not exist because the temple does not exist any longer, right? So they don't have a priesthood. They don't have a temple. They don't have these animals that need to be, that, that can be sacrificed in this temple. Guess what? We don't need that. God, Jesus is in the heavens with, amen, amen. Jesus is in heaven making atonement for us. So he has fulfilled this. And that is Hebrews, again, that is Hebrews 8, 1 through 2. And now Hebrews 9, 11 through 14 says this. But when Christ appeared as a high priest, of the good things to come he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this creation and not through the blood of goats and calves but through his own blood he entered the holy place once and for all having obtained eternal redemption amen for if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled through those who made <laughs> for 
verse 13. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself with out blemish to God cleanse your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God amen and so know this know this that it is saying right here all of that was a foreshadow you see in Leviticus you see in this in the Old Testament where there's all these different sacrifices Aaron had to give a bull for him and his household why because he was human because he sinned so he had to be cleansed from that sin. And then he could take those two goats, one to be a scapegoat, one to be a sacrifice, then sprinkle it on the altar, sprinkle it on the mercy seat. And that had to be done every year. Why? Because it was perpetually needed because the goats weren't enough. The bulls weren't enough. It, it was not enough. Here comes Jesus, our high priest, who is perfect, who, who, who provided us the ability to have a blood covenant with Yahweh, right? And so last place I'm going to go this afternoon is Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is going to show where it is Christ. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says this. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Excuse me, baby girl. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. By his stripes, some scripture says by his stripes, the scourging is different. So lashes will separate the skin from the leather, leather of the lash. But this wasn't just a whip. This had nails on it. It was gouging into his flesh and ripping it off. That is what this is. And by his stripes, we are made healed. So Isaiah right there is showing us how, wow, Old Testament very much speaks about Christ Jesus. Very much so. Last verse is 10 through 12, Isaiah 53, same chapter. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hands. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied by his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, will justify the many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great. I will divide the booty with the strong because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Amen. So again, Old Testament seeing, why do I celebrate the Day of Atonement? Because it's in scripture, because we see throughout when the Day of Atonement was established up until Christ walked, we see how every year they kept this ritual, the, the needing for the cleansing, the needing for the high priest, the needing for this order. And then this fully God or fully man comes, right? He was the word and the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he became that sin offering, that guilt offering. The feasts show who he is. Gives us a further understanding of why they did all of this. Right, Sylvia? Yes. Amen. Amen. So why do I celebrate it? Because it's history. Because it helps my babies. Yes, honey bunny. Yes, you can. It shows my children how they lived out the word of God. And how it applies to today, no baby girl, how it applies to today and what we can do in order to further understand who Jesus was and is and will always be. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so this is a feast that he has fulfilled. Yes, baby girl. No, baby, I will not. But you can have this. And so that is what it is, why we celebrate it. And I pray that if God moves you to celebrate it, know that it's not making you more righteous, that it's not making you more holy, that you are not making atonement for yourself. Yes, baby. No, we cannot. So we're going to close this up.
so that it doesn't distract, okay? So it doesn't make you more holy. It doesn't make you more righteous. But what it does do is help you to walk out the word of God, helps you to glorify him and um, recognize that I need to afflict my soul, that my atonement is needed all the time, that Jesus sits on the right hand of the father interceding for me, that that while when the Feast of Tabernacles comes up, because it's coming for a week, that that Holy Spirit chooses the tabernacle in me and not because I'm holy because of me. But I'm holy because he's holy and he has chosen to cleanse me and to make me holy. Amen. And so, thanks be to God who gives us the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the day of atonement. And I thank you, Lord God, for what your word says. I thank you that it is true and it doesn't return void. I thank you, Father God, that you are holy and you've told us to be holy as you are holy. And we submit to you. We confess, Lord God, our sins. We ask for forgiveness for our sin. And and you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That continual cleansing, Lord God. Help us to forgive others their sin. Because just as we ask for forgiveness, Lord God, we can only be forgiven as you as we ask forgiveness from others so we just thank you father god you are holy lord god and we love you in jesus name amen have a wonderful day y'all